welcome everyone uh, to today's live stream. It, it took a bit of a, a, a shift uh, over the last few days. First, it was going to be with Dave Foy. He got sick, can't do it, brought in Brian. And then I was like, Paul, Paul would be the guy to come in and talk about the BRICS side of things. So we're, I'm happy to have Paul and Brian join us today. If you don't know Paul, he has WP Tuts. Uh, you can find him on YouTube searching WP Tuts. I'm sure many of you watching know his channel already at WP Tuts with a Z on X or Twitter. WP Tuts with an S dot co dot UK. Paul, I wrote down content creator. Do you have a different another title for yourself? No content creator sounds good to me. I'd rather that than YouTuber. <laughs> yes, I yes, I don't like that. Uh, speaking of YouTuber, up and coming YouTuber, Brian Cords joins us uh, on the other side at Brian Cords on X. Uh, BrianCords.com. Brian, I wrote down, I took this upon myself. I wrote down developer and content creator. Fair? Or do you have another title you want to throw in? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I usually use the word educator because that was kind of my background. Mm. But, I, you know, content creator probably is makes more sense. Fair enough. Uh, everyone watching, a uh, round of applause for them. Follow their channels. We'll link those up in the comments as we go along. Uh, the WPMinute.com. That's what you're watching. The WPMinute.com slash subscribe. Get your favorite five minutes of WordPress every week. The WPMinute.com. So today's topic was, is the topic of what I'd say is like the last, I don't know, 30 days since the dawn of the new year. Blocks versus bricks. Bricks versus blocks. Um, I saw a lot of this going on. Look, we've been in, the, all of us, the three of us here on this call have been in the space for a while. Uh, I recently wrote a, uh, uh, when I wrote a post about this, I remember, I said, I remember seeing this stuff when the thesis theme came onto the scene, and then it was page lines, and then it was uh, Visual Composer, and then it was Elementor and Divi, and eh, we've seen all these things, you know, come and go over the years, and not go as in like disappear, but go as in excitement, uh, as in like one person moving from one tool to the next. And now we're at this stage where my gut feeling, and, and Paul and, and Brian, get your feedback, but my gut feeling is, yeah, WordPress core took a while. Gutenberg took a while. Blocks and full site editing still trying to get there <laughs> into like this really nice, cohesive user experience. But I think it's getting there. Really enjoy the 2024 theme personally myself. I could see myself building out, you know, friends website with it without too much uh, hair pulling. Um, but then there's tools like Bricks that do insane things. And <clears throat> When I zoomed out and looked at uh, the, the the chatter, I almost said noise. It's not noise, but like the chatter, the discourse around bricks. I thought to myself, well, these are great tools, but these are tools that are made for thousands of people, developers primarily, whereas blocks in the core experience has to be aimed at millions of people to experience this because millions of people experience core WordPress uh, at its core. Blocks for millions of users, bricks for thousands of users, air quotes, tens of thousands of users. Paul, I'll kick it to you first. Thoughts on bricks versus blocks. When is it the right time? Is it right for everyone? Should everyone be using this? Is it for an end user? Is it developer only? Bricks, let me hear your thoughts. Well, first of all, um, I released a video the other day about do you need to be a developer to use bricks? And I think the fundamental thing is there's a message out there by a certain subset of users that like to believe that that is the case. Personally, I don't think it is. I don't think you need to be a developer. If you have that background, you will absolutely benefit, but that's the same no matter what tools you use. Watching Brian's video recently, um, where he sort of delved in and started creating his own, his own sort of theme, you know, where you get into the JSON file and you start editing things like that. Again, you would benefit from having that developer background to go down that route. So I think, we need to dispel that myth, I think, that you need to be a developer. I think the core difference between the two is, and, and to kind of answer your question where you say about like bricks for tens of thousands, um, blocks for millions of users. It is absolutely the case, but I think we've got a very, very different subset of users that would potentially use the two anyway. And I personally, I don't think that we have Gutenberg in a place where millions of users would be comfortable being able to use it. I still think there's a big disconnect between various different aspects, whether you're talking about the sort of block editor itself, whether you want to get into 
the full site editing, those sides of things. There's still such a disconnect there that needs to be brought together. And I think this is where something like, uh, we'll, we'll say Gutenberg, but let's just say WordPress as, as a whole sort of thing. I think this is where the problem lies is that where you look at something like Bricks or Elementor, any of those tools, it's relatively cohesive in how you approach a project, building your templates, you know, integrating Gutenberg functionality, block functionality into your template instructions, you kind of get a hybrid approach. It's still more focused and it's a lot easier to work with, in my opinion, currently than we have with full site editing, with the admin side of things of WordPress and also you know, Gutenberg itself and the block editor, that disconnect really needs to be brought together and made much more cohesive before I think it will attract those millions of users that WordPress ultimately wants to bring on board. Brian, uh, you're obviously developing sites. Uh, well, Paul, let me quickly ask you, are you still developing sites for, for clients? Do you still do development work? I still do some development work. I don't take on new clients, but I work with clients that I've had for, for many, many years. I've got um, two or three projects on the go at the moment. And just to quickly say, one of those I use bricks and the other one I'm actually using generate press and generate blocks. So I'm not in that camp of being, I only use bricks. Do you know what I mean? I use the right tool, the best tool for the job. And that's the way I've always approached it. I don't have this sort of, this elitist attitude that, that's the only tool and everybody has to fit into my tool. I look at the project and the job and see what I think is the better tool set for it. And Brian, your stance would come from like, this is your <clears throat> being a developer is, is actively like what puts food on the table for you. You're developing sites, you're building sites. You've taken, and these are my words, and then you can clear it up. You've taken a stance of saying, I'm building as close to the WordPress core experience as possible using core blocks, uh, patterns, maybe full site editing to a degree, but you're you're saying, hey, look, I'm more in the core experience camp. Is that a fair statement or do you have a different tact? Yeah, I would say the last time I really was heavy in the beaver, like the page builder was beaver builder was like the new kid on the block. So, you know, whenever that was, that was the last kind of, so I haven't, you know, where I work, we kind of skipped over Elementor. I, you know, we would use it for things uh, when it kind of came to us. Um, but we didn't really go that approach. And then right now, a lot of our work is like WordPress VIP. So on the VIP platform, it's kind of not really an option to use a page builder. You really do have to stick pretty close to core in those experiences. But I think like Paul said, like it depends on the audience, depends on what's best for the, the site that you're building. It just depends on what's best for, you know, the situation you're in. And so in my sort of where I'm working right now, it, there's just not really the option to give somebody a page builder that you know might not be around in a while or might add a bunch of stuff onto their site that they don't want those sorts of things so you know i would say that most of what i'm doing right now is in the block editor and trying to make full site editing possible for clients but i mean i'm not going to disagree <laughs> with the idea that it needs some it needs some polish for sure it needs some polish the what do you have i mean i know you did a whole breakdown and i'm gonna uh show that I'm going to have link up that video in a, in a moment. Uh, but when, um, Kevin, uh, now, uh, put out a, a video about sort of like building layouts with bricks versus, uh, Gutenberg, uh, or I should, I should say the block editor. Um, I know you did a response video. We'll get that linked up. How, I mean, just rough, like just to give folks listening to this who have not thought about this as in depth as we have, I don't know how, can you even estimate how far out core blocks experience is from competing with bricks are, are we talking like this is years to come or it will never get to that level of bricks because it's just not that core audience like how do you look at that as a developer if a customer said to you we want to do a project with core wordpress or we want to do a, a, a project with a page builder i think you know one i think whatever timeline we thought Gutenberg was going to be on is clearly three, five X what, what they said or what yeah. people were expecting. So, you know, I'm more invested in the trajectory I think is good. I think we all feel very positive about where it's going. I think, like you said, we're starting to see some of those wins, but like, yeah, there's, there's a, there's a long road ahead. But I think the other piece to answer your question is like, I don't ever think that you're going to see bricks inside of the, the block editor. I just don't think, like, I think Brick solves a certain need for 
a certain type of agency or freelancer. And I think it should always, those sorts of things should always exist. But I think what they're really trying to accomplish is, is whether you're a user that's like a DIY person who gets an off-the-shelf theme, that theme's going to have some design constraints to it, some sort of pre-selected patterns, all of that, to you work at a huge marketing agency where you're putting in tons of content, you have a marketing team like NASA, you know, using the block editor, that sort of stuff. You know, in both of those situations, they don't really want to see, can I change the Z index on this div right now? Like, that's not what they want to see. Whereas the freelancer who's building and maintaining a site for somebody, that's that's going to 10x their, their workflow right there. So I just don't see the block editor ever giving us, I mean, like font is still like an experimental thing in the block. Like <laughs> yeah. font, yeah, that's still, yeah. that's fonts, you know, font yeah. sizes. So I, I don't think that they'll ever give that full range of stuff. And I think it'll always be somebody builds a curated theme and somebody else edits content in a really nice visual editor. But that content editing, I just don't think it's ever going to get to that page building. And there, I think it's just two different workflows. Paul, from your experience with working with Bricks and, and when you were going really deep, uh, maybe a year ago, a couple of years ago, at this point, maybe with like Elementor, what's that handoff like experience? to a to a customer like I, could a could a, an end user who's never experienced wordpress before she's running a bakery she just needs to like blog and put content but you know every now and again you know she wants to adjust something on the home page is can bricks satisfy that type of user should bricks satisfy that type of user if the developer's handing it off to them w what is that like compared to let's say the core experience of wordpress yes we know it's doesn't have as many features but that also means that well, maybe they won't get as lost in the weeds or really break things that they shouldn't be touching, like Z indexes and maybe some other CSS stuff. First of all, I would kind of say that generally I wouldn't hand off bricks or Elementor to a client and just give them carte blanche access to it. To kind of, let, let's, if we stick with bricks for now, because like I say, that's the kind of conversation we've got here. And there's a, I would have a slightly different approach with Elementor anyway. Um, but with Bricks, for example, the way I would approach it is twofold. I create a hybrid approach. So, for example, let's say you've got your, to use your, your sort of bakery owner analogy, he or she wants to sort of go in and create new content, add blog content, maybe create some page content, some basic structure. It's very easy. You can create your templates. You can pull in standard data like your featured image, post title, your meta information, ACF fields if you want to add additional information in, for example. Pull that into your template, but then you can give access to the Gutenberg editor, the block editor, inside that template. So if they want to add content and they want to use, you know, the full or stripped back version or integrate in, you know, sort of patterns that you've created into the whole design process, they can do that by using this sort of hybrid approach. So they've got the Gutenberg editor. They don't see bricks at all. They just log in. They'd access it. You train them up in whatever way you want, whether it's face-to-face, -face, virtual, you know, training material available on the website. Show them how to use the basic functionality of something like Gutenberg Block Editor, and then they kind of get the best of both worlds. So you control the main aspects of it, and then the content side of things, they can use that to add content in. And to kind of go back to your sort of your homepage thing, so for example, if you had a, your homepage, it's going to be broken down into very standardized sections. So yeah, your hero section at the top might have a message, might have a link to click through to something, your image. Well, you could easily set that up as an ACF field and then just tie that dynamic data in. So that all they do is they go and say, I want to change my hero image on my, my homepage, for example, go in, add that in there, job done. Or alternatively, if you've got something that's a little bit more tech savvy and they're comfortable with using the block editor, well, you could open the overall template side of things up so the header and foot and so on is locked, but the content inside there could use Gutenberg, the block editor. So you, you could create a hybridized approach if you want to. So you strip out bricks from the end user and give them Gutenberg or the block editor, you know, whichever you want to call it, but you then retain full control over the design aspect of all the templates. If they want something new, you know, you can add a new template in, in a matter of minutes and give access to that content by simply dropping in one element and they've got full access to, you know, the block editor or a stripped back version if you want to limit and restrict what they can access. So the hybrid approach is probably what I would, would go down that route. And if there were specific pages that you didn't need to give them access to that, 
then you could create an ACF based version, you know, with dynamic fields in it and uh, so meta fields and so on. And then you could create the template around that dynamic data. And all they need to do is go in and fill the relevant boxes in. And that page content is fleshed out using the template structure you've got. So you've got control over it, but they can put the content that they want or need in there. And again, you could have a hybrid approach of that, a mix and match of both of those, those, um, those methods. Mm. Brian, when you're developing sites, I, I don't know at like what complexity level, but do you hit a certain limit with core blocks and, and site editor? And then you start to augment that experience with ACF or another tool when, when you go to hand it over to a customer? Uh, like we sort of heard, you know, Paul's approach to it from the page builder down approach, but what about from like core up, if I could like illustrate that, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, so ACF is still used for, you know, say there's a type of data on their site, like they have a bunch of the same thing, a bunch of stores, and they just need to add the address or whatever. And we'll use ACF for that. And then we just control, you know, that exactly what Paul's talking about, control the front end. But then I think where it gets tricky is let's say you have they have a their landing page, their homepage, and you have all these, you know, kind of rows of content. And the old way used to be ACF with like flexible content rows, and they could pick which row and drag and they'd fill out all these fields and go check the front end. You know, we're trying to give them, you really want them to be able to look at what their page is going to look like, click anywhere and change some content. But, you know, it doesn't always happen that way, but it's it's nice to give them something visual to, to look at. And I think for a lot of developers, the pathway to get there is ACF blocks because you can just put ACF right in the middle of the block editor anywhere and they can see what it looks like. And then they can click a button and that little section turns into some ACF fields. Um, that's kind of the first place to go with that. Um, and, and what I'm kind of learning recently is, you know, like Paul was saying earlier, people think you need to be a developer. You need to do this. People keep saying you need to know React to work with the block editor and stuff. And I think, I think the big gap now is like, you can actually do a lot of stuff with the core blocks. They just don't teach it well. <laughs> no one's teaching it, you know? And that's, that's the gap right there is like, same thing. You don't need to know React to do this stuff. The the power's there, but man, it's just hard to find and it's hard to learn about. Yeah. Go ahead. I say that I think I think we're kind of at a bit of a crossroads at the moment because, like you're saying, I think we're kind of like with Bricks, for example, they're bringing their components out relatively soon, which is very similar to the um, the new features coming out in the blog editor. Which for some reason is it PSP? I can't remember the name of it. The partially synced. Oh, patterns. They, yeah, yeah. They'll change the patterns. name, you know. Too yeah, much please, I really hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I think that's when we kind of get things like that, where you can create the design, but you can separate the content in the same way that CSS and HTML separate design or style from content. I think once we get that, you know, in whichever method you choose, whether it's the block editor, PSP method, or whether it's the, the components inside Bricks, I think this is where you're going to get a much better experience for the end user because. You can then, like you say, give them that visual block they can drop in there for the hero section or whatever it is. And all they need to do is click inside it and change the text in the same way that it's very similar to what you kind of see with Wix experience and things like that. The template is pre-built. They can then just go click inside there, change what they want. But you've controlled the design and layout and the flexibility and, and the sort of scaling across responsive modes and things like that. So I think once that becomes a bigger focus inside the block editor, inside tools like Bricks. I think handing off to a client becomes a much smoother and a much nicer experience for them. How, uh, Ryan, on the pat on the pattern side of things, I mean, that's probably where we're gonna see, in terms of like core WordPress, patterns is pr probably that next sort of frontier, uh, excuse me, templates in the full site editor is the next experience uh, to be heavily improved for faster, what I'll say, WordPress development, right? Like everyone hears about the advantages of, let's say, Bricks and Elementor and Beaver Builder. Like, oh, we can template this, we can build these things, and we can replicate them, copy and paste, and really increase that workflow from a 50,000 foot view. What we're trying to do is get more efficient. That's why we're using these tools, is we're hoping to get, in my opinion, more efficient with our development. Full site editing, that's the next frontier for like smooth making this process faster for us, I'd imagine, for a core WordPress. Yeah, I mean, the next release, like Paul said, that synced patterns idea, I mean, I think it has a long way, it's still kind of baking, you know, it's not there yet. That, and then another 
twin part of that is the ability to use custom fields in core blocks. So like you have a paragraph and you can say, sync this to an ACF field. Like it's actually kind of crazy that that's just now coming, but that those two things are sort of the focus, I think. Um, and then there's also like a font library where you can swap out fonts very easily. I think those three things are going to kind of tweak it. And then the sort of elephant in the room, honestly, is responsive design um, that, you know, we haven't spoken about it, but that's, I mean, if you're going to talk about responsive design, Bricks is going to blow, you know, Gutenberg out of the water on that. So that those things are kind of coming. Responsive design, I you know, something needs to happen. But I think those are the final frontiers of saying, okay, full site editing. I feel really confident handing this over. I, they can visually edit a design. I can lock everything very easily. I can pull in custom fields. It looks good on mobile, all of that. Uh, I think those are the last pieces. Can you unpack the disadvantages or the lack of mobile design right now in, in the core experience for those that don't know? Because like right now, uh, when I was playing with 2024, I was like, mm, I, you know, I, whatever, I designed my header. And uh, when I was like, I'm going to customize something in the menu, I hit the mobile button. So it, the mobile display button, and it showed it me in the, you know, the mobile display, and I made my modifications, hit save, worked like a charm. But that's easy. That was me moving just one element or hiding one element, which I think was the sign up button. So that was fairly easy. But you're saying. I think I might have lost Matt. We lose Matt. Okay. Oh, and we're back. Okay. <laughs> uh, can you unpack the 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 lack of or the uh, the disadvantages of mobile for in Gutenberg. So the the kind of company line of it so far has been that instead of responsive design, they've come from the approach of what's called intrinsic design, which is basically good in some places. Like fluid typography is an example where the font gets a little bit bigger the bigger your screen gets instead of these kind of jumps to different sizes. So you know as you scale up, the font size gets a little bigger. That's that's a great approach and it's it's really handy. But then you get into like columns and grids where you're like, no, I, on mobile, I want this to collapse down and I want the text to be centered now instead of left aligned, all these sorts of things. There's there's just nothing there for that um, without you writing custom CSS. So there's there's really nothing in the editor that really handles responsive design well. You have to kind of bring in extra blocks. Um, Automatic has like a, a kind of a decent block that they put on all the wordpress.com sites for it. Um, it's just not there yet. But the other side of it is the way that all, all the other block edit or page builders have done responsive design starts to feel really overwhelming and clunky where every, you know, you go into like every setting, there's the little three icons, the, you know, and you switch back and forth between them and there's the three breakpoints. And it's like, you know, I like the idea that maybe there's something better past that. But uh, I also think, it's been long enough to where if they didn't come up with that better idea, maybe just give us the three icons and let us start changing those settings on different yeah. screen sizes. Yeah. Um, but I, it's, I, I don't know what the, the action is on there. I don't know what's coming. Yeah. I think, I think this is the problem and probably why Gutenberg, I keep saying Gutenberg, you know what I mean? WordPress itself, full site edit experience and so on gets such a bad name is because it kind of feels like they've developed it in such a, well, the only way I can say is like designed by committee. If you've ever worked with a, a a company and there's multiple people there working with you on that design, you know yourself that it's like it's very difficult to get a straight answer with anything. And it really feels like that's what's happened is that you've got multiple people involved in it and everyone is shouting about what is the most important thing to be brought in. And it doesn't necessarily mean there's, it's, it's been put together in a logical, streamlined, timeline fashion where you go, okay, these are the fundamental things we need. Like you say, responsive. At the end of the day, we have to have responsive design because everybody is using so many different devices to not have full control of that feels very strange. The same with typography. Why so late? Why three to four to five years down the line are we still not having those fundamental things? Because the only way I can sort of like it is, is if you took, let's just say a product like Bricks, if someone come out with, I don't know, cement tomorrow, and that didn't have the basic functionality that we needed, that would fail and fall flat and it's it's behind there and then. And I think only because WordPress is so prevalent have they had the luxury to be able to work in their own timeline, in their own roadmap that doesn't necessarily make logical sense to anybody outside it. Does, does that kind of make sense? 
Yeah, it's actually leading into uh, a, a segment I wanted to get into uh, before we take uh, Q and A. <clears throat> um, is sort of the uh, supporting WordPress, right? Oh, the, yes, I totally agree with you. But WordPress still needs to survive and thrive. And I think what I often see, and not to put the weight of all page builder communities on your shoulders, Paul, but you're the one guy that represents it right now on this call, is I see a lot of people just, WordPress is terrible. This is awful. Can't believe they do that. And, you know, but this, you know, tool that I'm using is, is far superior. I get it for that context, for that thing you're trying to do. This tool is better. <clears throat> but how do we bridge the gap of, there's your tool, glad it works for you, but you also have to support this open source community, this open source software, because without WordPress, Bricks, Elementor, Beaver Builder, they just don't exist, right? Because these tools are not building the complete CMS portion uh, nope. that Word, WordPress solves. And I don't have a direct question there, but it, I often see it and I, and it just, it just stirs in me a bit like, man, you can't all just have these fast, free, powerful tools, but then disregard this open source thing that is, is designed by committee, which drives people nuts. But at least you could jump into a Slack channel and give your thoughts, give your opinions, whether that gets absorbed or not, but you have this sort of say at the seat at the table to a degree to help you know, impact this stuff. And I, I want to see more of the page builder communities, the many pockets of them also like help and, and give back to the project. So these things can coexist um, and WordPress continues to thrive. I don't have a direct question there, but that's sort of just my thoughts on that. Um, my answer to that would be, I think it's a chicken and egg situation because without the likes of going back to like visual composer and what was prior to that or marketplaces like um invato elements and then you've got you know all the other page builders and all the other things that have come out around it you know the sort of block level things like green shift quickly and so on would wordpress actually be powering as much of the internet as it is because you kind of have to think that the reason it has become so big in comparison to, for example, a lot of other CMSs and open source platforms and things, and going back years ago, like let's just say like Joomla and things like that, they never became as big. But was that down to them or was it down to the ecosystem that built around it, that pushed and promoted, built on the back of WordPress? So is it more of a sort of synergistic link between the two that the one wouldn't become as big without the other? Do you know, do you know what I mean? Oh, and the other thing... Yeah. And the thing to kind of go back to the sort of page builders and not, you know, not just page builders, but let's just say parts of the WordPress uh, community, you know, that are third party applications and things like that. The problem you have with all of these is tribalism. And I've said this in many, many formats before. Tribalism is the biggest killer of having a platform or an open source network, whatever you want to kind of call the supportive of each other. Because like you said, my page builder is better than your page builder. Gutenberg is better than Bricks. Bricks is better than blah, blah, blah. My opinion personally is I don't care. I really don't care. At the end of the day, if Bricks does a job better than the next product for me and my clients, and it makes my life easier, it makes me more money, makes me more productive, whatever it is, that's the tool I will use until something comes along. Maybe I'm in an enviable position where I can go from one thing to the next because it's part of what I do, you know? being a content creator, being an online educator, I get, I have to keep up with things that are going. But then I'm using certain tools on a commercial basis with clients. I'm using them with my own uh, sort of projects that I need to be fast, efficient, fluent, you know, easy to update and all those kinds of things. So I think when it comes to having that support, I think until you can get rid of tribalism and that whole, like you say, mine is better than yours, I don't think you're ever going to get that community spirit where everybody just wraps their arms around each other. I think it's just human nature. We support different football teams, rugby teams, sports teams, whatever you do. We have different brand loyalty with cars, with food, with drinks. It's human nature. And unfortunately, until you can change that, which I don't think is ever going to happen, it's always going to have that situation where people are going to think their choice is better and they just want people to validate their choices and to make them feel good about the fact that they made the, the same choice as the rest of the tribe, and then they can throw rocks at the tribe next door. Do you know what I mean? 
I, I think that's unfortunately that's the way it's 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 going to be, and that's never going to change. And it's not going to change between the block editor, full site editing, WordPress as a core CMS, and these other tools that are out there. There'll be an overlap, but I don't think you're ever going to get rid of that competitive element, that tribalism that surrounds it. Brian, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think I just agree. I think the the crazy thing is that it comes from both sides, you know, the because I, I agree that page builders have a lot of reason why we're seeing so much market share. I mean, even when we were doing custom builds and we were working with marketing agencies and a lot of them started just realizing, hey, we're graphic designers. Let's just start using Elementor and just build sites ourselves and spinning up even more sites faster. I think that's a huge part of it. And then when you have, you know, the head of WordPress saying that people are going to leave Elementor because the block editor is so much better, it just not understanding that they're just not not even the same tool. I mean, they're just two different tools solving two different things. Um, that's just really not helpful. I think what's helpful is having just growth across the entire community, having, you know, the WooCommerce people doing their WooCommerce thing over there and, you know, the other, you know, different like groups. I mean, that's just what makes WordPress popular, what makes it good. Um, I, I like the idea of it getting a little more interoperable and a little less these different bubbles and stuff. But at the end of the day, I'd rather just see the whole the whole system kind of rise, you know? Question came in. This was actually going to be sort of a segue into another segment here. Uh, Elliot Richmond asks, is there a financial lock-in with Bricks? That puts me off to start. Blocks aren't perfect, but the fact that it's managed by, the co by core suggests it's only going to get better and more performant. <clears throat> Paul, when you and I did a live stream on this channel a few years ago when you were still uh, deep, deeply using um, Elementor, I remember asking you, because this is something I've been witnessing forever, it doesn't matter which page builder, page builder comes along and then add-ons come along for these page builders and then everybody starts hopping on from one add-on to the next add-on, oh, this, ne this next add-on's free with more stuff and they move to that and then they move to another page builder that has more free, fast and powerful. I constantly see this evolution or this domino effect Bricks especially has a massive ecosystem already. Uh, you know, Bricks has probably been on my radar for a year ish, and there's just add ons and features. And I start to wonder, and I know they're doing like a pricing thing. I don't know if it already changed. They had like a lower lifetime. Now they're going yeah. annual. I start to worry <laughs> <clears throat> about that infrastructure, the sustainability of a business. And I'm sure they're in a fi fantastic spot, but I see so many add ons, and I, I start to worry about builders coming in s absorbing all of these third-party tools amongst third-party tools and then where does that leave them in a year or two do they keep moving do they keep going for faster free or better somewhere else where does that leave their customer that was you know put together with all these things you could make the same argument with free plugins in the repo but from a sustainability issue do you ever talk about that uh, amongst uh, your audience about making healthy decisions with, with add-ons and features that you're purchasing um, with Bricks. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, funny enough, I did a, a live stream this afternoon about two hours before which I jumped on here with you guys. Um, the thing I would say, even though there's the ecosystem growing up around Bricks, Bricks as a product itself doesn't require those add-ons. If you look at Elementor, and I've said this, and I've been critical of this for probably the last five years, there are lots and lots of gaps in the Elementor tool set that require you to use additional plugins. And I'm talking fundamental things. So for example, something as simple as like, you want to have some kind of conditional logic, you use, you know, they brought in some kind of uh, visibility control, but that's still in a very early beta. But let's say, for example, you're using something like advanced custom fields, and they've had dynamic tags in there to work with dynamic data since version two. So we're talking three plus years they still don't have any control over if you have an MDAS ACF field, for example, that will still show up on there. So you have to use a third party plugin to do something that's really quite basic. Bricks, and like I say, Bricks is not perfect. None of these tools are perfect, but Bricks has kind of gone in with a very different attitude. They've gone, right, okay, if you are going to be using a tool like Advanced Custom Fields, these are the basic things you're going to want to need to do. You know, you're going to need to be able to do things like uh, show or hide things. You need to have conditions and stuff like that. You're going to need to use some of the more advanced things like repeater regions, you know, um, just various different things that as anyone that's building a site, anything beyond the basics, you need these functions. And Bricks have been very strategic and smart in the fact that this is only two years old and they already 
for the last year have had all of these features in there. So I think the reliance is different. I think the fact, if you look at a lot of what's growing up around uh, bricks at the moment, it's more to do with design sets or templates and you know things like that. So like your patterns you'd have in, uh, in the block editor. So they're totally optional. If you want to speed up your workflow, use them. They're like wireframe patterns or designs, whatever. You can use a CSS framework. You don't have to, but you can do if you want to, and it can be faster to operate with. But again, these are things that you can use if you want to, but if you took all of those things away, you could still get the job done without any real problem by using bricks. I say, I can only focus on bricks in this example, but I think this is the difference and that you need to be careful in how you look at that ecosystem growing up around it. There's nothing there that's really fundamental to getting the job done. Whereas with Elemental, there was a lot of things that you needed to be able to get anything beyond simplistic dynamic sites, for example, built, if that makes sense. I think we've lost Matt again. Always oh, turned no. into a circle. Uh, <laughs> All kinds of technical issues. You can you can probably hear me. You just can't see me. Um, we can. Brian, let me kick it to you while I fix fix my camera. Uh, your thoughts on where maybe blocks is missing some core components? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think I've definitely sort of hammered that one home. I think yeah. you know with the responsive design and a few of those. But you know, to come back to that idea of lock in, like. Every December, I renew my Beaver Builder license for like five sites that I built for some people a long time ago. And I just feel guilty telling them one day, hey, you know what? I'm still paying for this, you know, three or four hundred dollar a year license for, you know, the site I built for you 10 years ago. But, you know, it, that's kind of the price of admission. I think that's, you know, what it's people are concerned about. Yeah. It, you know, so it, it just depends, I, you know, on on the block editor side, because you because the whole thing is is not proprietary it's open source like you you i mean everything's open source here but like open source in the sense that like it's a lot it's very extendable i can make custom blocks i can modify the blocks i know i can do that because it's wordpress core and i also know that because it's wordpress core once they put something in they'll never take it out um you know once they once they add that feature which is why i think they're so slow to add features it it stays there so you know there is that kind of nice you know you do get a really good long-term benefit but you know at the end of the day, uh, yeah, you're not going to get all the features that that Bricks is because Bricks can do one thing really well for one specific audience, and the block editor is a little maybe uh, unfocused, you know? Yeah. Do, do you do you sort of agree? Well, I say agree, but I haven't even you know I haven't convinced myself yet. But I think WordPress core itself, the 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 core version of WordPress, like the 2024 theme, is great. I think it's in, a, in moving in that that better direction. But I feel like it should. We should just have one theme at this point. Like, just just give us this one theme. Let's stop redoing uh, year after year a whole new theme and focus on a core experience that, like, a Cadence or a Generate Press put out. Where it's here's like this framework, and then here's the patterns that that go well into it and design it yourself. Like, I, I feel like to me, that's from a product standpoint, that's the step in the direction of WordPress can solve a bunch of things instead of having this more opinionated design. 2024 is less opinionated, certainly, than maybe the last two years. Um, but I, I feel like that's the direction that they should go into from like a product and product standpoint. Uh, any thoughts on that? Well, if you look at the theme, was it 2023, which is just that really... I mean, it was like the neon green button and the right. white text, just, I mean, just brutal. And then it had all those different style colors, which is a feature I do think that we're not really seeing used maybe as, as much where you could change kind of these default styles and stuff that, that was the idea. Hey, one theme and you can change all these styles and stuff. And it wasn't that great. This theme I think is more opinionated in that it, it does have a bit of a personality to it. The fonts a little more like playful and stuff like that. I personally do like the new themes, but I do think themes should be really focused. So it would be really great if next year they were like, instead of a just a default theme, we're going to do a creator theme. That's really just for, you know, you know, all these people leaving Substack and going to Ghost. Why not have a theme that's really built for that audience? And then maybe the next mm -hmm. year, a theme that's really built for the small business or something like that, because I think there are differences. Uh, and what they're trying, all that energy really goes into all the patterns and, and all the templates and stuff. So they could put that energy towards one specific thing. I think that would be kind of nice, you know, um, 
because I do think there is benefit in different themes and it's still a little hard to turn one theme into another just inside the block editor. Before I lost my train of thought when my camera went out, I was going to ask you from the developer side of things, uh, how much code do you write custom code? I mean, I know it's going to depend on the project, but roughly how much custom code do you write to supplement your work with core WordPress blocks and site editor and ACF versus maybe somebody who never has to crack open and Notepad plus plus. That's how long it's been since I've actually coded something. But like, you know, somebody could go into bricks and be like, I don't know, I, editor, you know, get workflow. Don't do any of that. I just use bricks and it does it all for me. Versus maybe your environment, Brian, where you're you're doing things with blocks in the WordPress editor experience, but then you're also supplementing that with yeah, whatever your own functions file, JavaScript, CSS that you're writing and uploading to the server. Yeah, you know, it's funny because when I was watching the some of the brick stuff to kind of learn about it, I think one of the features everyone loves is you can write PHP functions in it and add that into your template. You can write CSS everywhere and stuff. And so I think I'm probably writing the same amount of code for the visual layout. I mean, obviously we're doing other things, APIs and stuff like that, but for just the, the visual design, I think I'm writing probably a similar amount of code. I'm just not writing it in a UI. I'm writing it in a theme or a custom plugin and using you know, Git and version control and all that stuff for that. But like at the end of the day, I think both cases, like you hit a wall where you're going to have to write custom code and no builder is ever going to solve that. But it's, you know, a lot of the people I work with, they love Tailwind CSS. And a lot of people in Bricks love the, I think it's automatic CSS. And they're similar concepts. And one is just doing it through the more of a UI and the other one's doing it a little bit more uh, in their code editor. But at the end of the day, to use automatic CSS, you still got to understand classes and uh, utility classes and all these sorts of things. It's just a different, a different approach. Paul, was that a fair assessment for me to make about a tool like Bricks to say that one might never have to write code again uh, when they use a tool like this? Because <clears throat> when I evaluate the abilities of Bricks, and maybe by the time you build something, I feel like we start going around the circle where I, I might as well just start coding because by the time I do all of it in break, I'm like, damn, I should have just, I should have just cracked open the code editor and wrote this stuff myself. Probably would have been faster, more efficient joking. But like, is it a fair assessment for me to, to think that I won't have to touch code as a bricks user? It all depends. Uh, as Brian says, I mean, if, in, in Gutenberg, for example, in, in the block editor, you could build, probably 90% of what you wanted. And for simpler sites, you wouldn't need to touch any code at all. You could, you know, you could use a full site editing to create your templates. You can use the block editor to create your layouts and so on. But if you want to go beyond those limitations and you want to make something a little bit more unique, you would start digging into code, whether that's something as simple as just CSS to style things that are outside what you can do with the block editor. The same holds true of a tool like Bricks. Sure, there's probably more tools inside there that you could use the vanilla options but then all of your sites will probably just end up looking the same. But if you want to get in, you know, and you want to start styling things out, then yes, using a class-based system makes life incredibly easy to do that. Using sort of uh, BEM to sort of be able to easily target exactly what you want. If you want to get stuck in and start, like you say, adding PHP functions in there, you want to edit the CSS, HTML, you can do it all inside there. But one of the things I would say is, yes, you could probably get in and you could just hand code a lot of it. But one of the benefits of using something like the Bricks environment, if you're already integrated into that to build the site to start off with and you're enhancing it, is that there are a lot of things inside there that just make working with that code, adding that code to the relevant different parts of your design quicker, easier, and more efficient. So it's it's always going to be a case of swings and roundabouts. You know, you'll get benefits going down one route, benefits going down the other. But I think, as I said, I think back at the beginning of, of the stream, if you understand, even if just the fundamentals of some simple CSS and HTML, you will very quickly come to the point where you go, this doesn't do what I want it to do, so I'm going to go and do it and, and override what I can do there, whether that's using generate press, generate blocks, cadence, whether it's using the core, or whether it's using Bricks, Elemental, Breakdance, or any other tools out there. It comes down to you as a user. If you want to go beyond the limitations, you can get in there and do it, and these tools make it much easier to do. If you want to go in hands dirty and get stuck in from the get-go, then you probably wouldn't be using WordPress to start off with anyway. You're probably going to get stuck in and, and build your own sites. You know, so I think it's 
it's, it comes down to the use case, comes down to what you want to do, and ultimately comes down to what you're comfortable with using. Brian is incredibly comfortable, obviously, with using, you know, core WordPress, using the block editor, full site editing, all the things like that. And watching his video the other week in response to Kevin's, you could see he's incredibly comfortable with what he's doing there. But not everybody has that level of comfort or really wants to get stuck into that aspect of things. But if you do have those skills, I think all these tools make it possible to go beyond the basics. 100%. I want to start wrapping things up. Paul, thanks for joining today. Where can folks follow you so that they can say thanks? Uh, easiest thing to do is if you just go on to Google and just type in WP Tuts, then my channel will come up, my website will come up. If you want my specific Bricks tutorials, then you can just go to learnbricksbuilder.com. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can just do WP Tuts with a Z because the S wasn't available. And you can find me on there. <laughs> one of the one of the branding things that still nags you today, Brian. Yep. Where, <laughs> where can folks find you to say thanks? Um, yeah, uh, it's um, my name, Brian Cords. It's dot com at Twitter at YouTube. It's kind of all the same. And I will be if anybody's on the West Coast, I will be at WordCamp Phoenix doing a presentation. And I'm hoping Ooh. to see some of the West Coast WordPress people uh, show up to the only WordCamp in uh, <laughs> this side of the country. I'm going to go through some of the Q, uh, questions that came through. I don't think there's anything really pressing we have to answer. I want to be respectful of Brian's time. Nomad Skateboarding says, this has been the same conversation about every new page builder. Remember Headway? I sure do. Core WordPress would probably be closer to bricks at all if our efforts went there instead of the shiny new thing. Elliot says, community-driven is going to be more uh, consideration over small teams, in my opinion. Richard Mullen throws out an interesting fact. I've spent around $1,200 on Bricks and about five other plugins, frameworks, forms, uh, most with lifetime deals. I've easily made that money back and saved on projects compared uh, to me using Gutenberg. <clears throat> Another one from Elliot. As a developer, I'm definitely in the camp of staying as close to the core as possible. There goes my camera once again. Paul, I got to get a, a, dummy a dummy battery for my Sony camera. It just keeps shutting off. <laughs> <laughs> Overheating, developer, probably. <laughs> yep. As a developer, I'm finally in the camp of saying as close to the WordPress core as possible uh, for all the sites I've developed and inherited. Uh, that's that's that. Let's see what we can do to just bring my face back with, let's say, maybe the FaceTime camera. It's, even that's not working. Man, all of my stuff. <laughs> is just failing miserably. Uh, everybody, thanks for watching today's live stream. I really appreciate it. The WPMinute.com. Go to the WPMinute.com slash subscribe so you can get your favorite five minutes of WordPress every week. Brian, Paul, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for hanging out today. Pleasure. Thank you. Ooh.